Falling timber is one of the most spectacular and technical of the many types of operations necessary in logging. Yet thousands of fallers, a few of whom will be shown in action in this picture. One of the first requirements for successful falling is tools that are sharp and in good condition. Filing sheds are the places where most of the fallers' tools are put in top shape and workday mornings usually find heavy traffic through these buildings. Falling saws and bucking saws have been sharpened, set, and if necessary, straightened. Wedges brought in battered and mushroomed go back to the woods, ground down, safe to use. Power saw chains are handled by short ropes. Filing sheds with separate exits provide one-way traffic, safe and convenient. Crew trucks have special boxes for tools, reached only from the outside. And none of the sharp or heavy tools ride inside the crew compartment with the men. Say now, where's that axe going? Not into the crew compartment. No, coming back where it belongs. Good. This means a safer trip for the crew. When all the tools have been properly stored and the whole crew accounted for by the bullbucker, the entrance is closed. Then the truck moves on to the woods. This set of fallers and their bullbucker are going to look over a new strip for immediate falling. And the fallers are moving their tools from a completed strip to the new one. The bullbuck shows them the boundaries of this particular strip. About 400 feet to the right, the same to the left, and back into the woods to the crest of a ridge about 800 feet away. This strip is large enough for a set of fallers to work without having to fall any timber onto adjoining areas, such as the one in the lower right-hand corner of the picture, which has been felled and bucked, but not logged or into the logged area on the left side of the picture. The timber stands on bench country between two low ridges. Even a simple strip like this presents many problems, and the head faller considers the lay of the land, lean of timber caused by prevailing winds, location of spar tree and method of logging as he picks out the first tree to be felled. A bullbucker knows an experienced faller just by the way he loads and carries his tools. As many tools are carried on the first trip as can be handled with safety, but no more. One hand is left free for the axe so that branches can be slashed out of the way by the loaded men. Hard hats are necessary to guard against overhead hazards. One of the most important parts of the operation of falling timber is footwork. Yes, footwork. Caution against slips and falls is very necessary at all times. Corks must be kept clean and sharp, for they protect the faller at every step. In brushy country, the bullbucker sometimes helps a set of fallers into their first tree by swamping out a path for them. Two very important steps in falling are preparing one or more getaway paths so the fallers can get in the clear quickly when the tree goes over, and brushing out around the tree to make room to work safely. An ax or saw might catch on the top of this rotten stump, so off it comes. While this second faller continues brushing out, the head faller checks his tree closely for lean. Finding the lean of the tree helps the faller plan his falling operation. If the lean will carry the tree into standing timber or other dangerous obstacles, a better path is chosen for it. To hold the tree away from its lean and to put it into the best bed requires planning. Under certain conditions, springboards are occasionally needed. 
and one will be used on this tree because the ground drops down several feet behind the root on the left. While one faller on the right cuts the first chip, the other cuts a hole for his springboard. A wide hole with a flat lower surface makes a safe support for the springboard and permits the faller to swing his board to different positions. If the hole is properly made and the springboard itself is in good condition and of good material, then a springboard makes a safe working platform. When the first chip has been removed, the line at the back of the undercut should be at right angles to the bed planned for the tree. Getting the first chip right makes it easier to keep the rest of the undercut in line. Experienced fallers use hand stones to keep their axes razor sharp. Sharp tools are safe tools. Every step in the falling operation, when properly done, contributes to the success of the job and helps keep the job safe. These fallers work perfectly as a team as they enlarge the undercut. In slow motion, we watch the pull on the axe handle as the chips are wrenched loose from the tree. This pulling puts a slight permanent bend in the handle, giving the blade a bit of an angle. This angle is used by fallers to make cutting easier and faster. For example, watch this faller. Split a chip, flip the axe, cut the chip loose. Split chip, flip axe, cut chip loose. When the undercut is almost finished, the head faller gives the tree a final gunning. Here he notices that the top of a tree may be unavoidably brushed since it leans into the path of fall. Let's take another look at the drawing. We see clearly that the completed undercut will help guide the tree into its bed. Now these fallers are ready to saw the back cut. The faller on the far side has swung his springboard way around and because he made the springboard hole big enough in the first place, he does not have to stop on this tree to make the hole bigger or cut a new one. After the back cut is well along, a number of cuts are made at various angles. This is called cornering. And on this tree, the first cornering is on the left. Soon they will shift to the right. Cornering makes the sawing easier and faster, and on some trees, helps direct the fall and prevent splitting. The head faller is responsible for the safety of anyone who may be nearby. Well before the tree falls, he gives his first warning cry. As the final back cut starts, let's follow this job through by animation. A good undercut was chopped. The first back cut has been sawed, cornering was done on the left and on the right. Then after the first warning cry, most of the remaining wood is sawed out, leaving a thin hinge of wood connecting the tree and the stump. Whether the remaining wood shown here in white is thicker at the left or the right, depends on the tree. The head faller determines how much wood is held according to the lean of his tree and the bed picked out for it. Here, wood is held on the left to pull the tree to the left of its lean. And, with the undercut, direct the tree's fall into its bed. Into the wood! A light wind makes a little wedging necessary. And then, both men make a safe getaway over the paths previously cleared. There's the top of that tree which was leaning into the path of the falling tree. Sometimes these tops whip back toward the fallers. The getaway paths and hard hats protect against overhead hazards. A good job all around. Here is a crew truck that is moving a power saw set from a completed strip to a new strip. They are traveling on a private road and warning signs are set up by the bullbuck under direction of the management. 
It is the responsibility of the head faller to advise truck and auto drivers when it is safe to go through the danger area. At the strip, two fallers and a bullbuck get out of the cab. As unloading begins, we notice that the tools are in the outside boxes. From the right-hand toolbox, the power saw chain is lifted by its rope and carried by its rope. Then power saw axes. From the near side, hammer and wedges. The first aid station sign with a long shaft to hold it up in plain sight. Now the power saw. With no men in the crew compartment, the saw may be moved from one strip to another in the crew truck. Otherwise, it travels in a pickup. The stretcher, protected by a canvas bag. The men of this crew have all had official first aid training courses. Very essential. The experienced logger knows that a knowledge of first aid may save his life or the lives of fellow workmen. And all men who work in the woods should avail themselves of the opportunity to learn first aid. Wedges and hammer will ride easily over one shoulder when the sack top is wound around the hammer. The gas was carried completely separate from the crew truck. The bullbuck is going to look over the strip with the head faller, so he gives his crew a hand with their tools. Care to avoid slips and falls is used by all fallers. And when a power saw is being carried, it is the duty of the man in the lead to warn the man carrying the motor end. Watch that. The head faller and the bullbuck set out to look over the strip. And in particular, they are going to determine how to handle a very bad snag. Also, the head faller picks out his first tree to fall, which proves to be a large fir with a lean at the butt. Power saw falling requires the same brushing out, preparation of getaway path, and planning of the falling operation as hand falling. But the power saw operator has other points to watch, such as the quick pull of the motor up to the tree when the cutting starts. The faller at the stinger end pulls the saw. He never leans on it. If necessary, he handles the saw from the end. He is always in the clear in case of a slip or fall. Leaning against the motor when backing the saw out of the cut is a definite safety precaution. The back of the saw might catch in wood, driving the motor toward the operator. It is better to get pushed than kicked. Gunning or sighting is done along the side or top of the motor. The first warning cry in power saw falling is usually given just before the back cut is started. The same principles of back cutting and holding wood generally apply in power saw falling as in hand falling. This falling operation was properly planned to pull the tree well to the right of its natural lean and it falls directly into the bed picked for it, breaking cleanly from the stump in spite of the curve of the butt. We watch another set of fallers who are well along on their strip. As they move to a new tree, the motor of their saw, we notice, is stopped. The ground drops away sharply on the lower side of this tree, and to hold the stinger end of the saw up to proper cutting level, the head faller uses a pole enabling him to work from the ground level. On some types of saws, a metal loop is put on the pole and then slipped over the stinger. After the motor is started, the clutch is not engaged until the saw is in cutting position. This is a definite protection to both men, whether they are working on the ground with or without poles or on springboards. As the first cut is completed and the saw withdrawn, we see clearly that the saw teeth stop as they leave the bark. More protection to the fallers. The depth of the undercut into the tree and the extra cut these fallers are making give better direction and control of the falling and prevent barber chairing or splitting of the trunk, stump pull and twist. The power saw axe, known as the Pulaski tool, is used to clean out the undercut. 
One blade of the axe is turned at right angles to the usual axe blade to cut and break the slabs. A good undercut, well placed and well cleaned out, means a tree safely felled. One faller has now shut the motor off while the other wedges. Here the deep undercut and the head faller's good judgment on holding wood paid off. A well planned and executed job of falling. This head faller knows there is a bucker working nearby. And like all good fallers, he is going to be absolutely certain that the bucker is completely in the clear. The head faller watches the bucker climb up out of the hole and make his way into the clear. There is no question whatever as to his safety. Timber! This faller did more than warn. He made certain. In electric falling, the same principles of putting in a good undercut and of holding wood are used as in gas saw falling. There are several important differences, however. The power comes from a portable generator, and the cable leading from generator to saw is plugged into a ground box after the box is grounded to the earth. Care must be used to make the connections properly, lining up the connectors before plugging in. Another important point is to disconnect the line from the saw motor after the undercut is completed and before shifting the saw to the back cut. When signs like these have been put up on either private or public roads, their purpose is to prevent any trucks, autos, or other equipment from passing through a danger area unless they are waved on by a flagman. <laughs> It is the responsibility of the head faller to send someone to signal traffic through when travel is safe, or if traffic is so heavy that a flagman is stationed at the road, the head faller must keep the flagman advised of danger periods. A faller must be extra alert around snags, loose bark, dead limbs that might be jarred off by chopping, wedging, or even sawing rotten tops or trunks, all demand that the fallers do a lot of looking up and also that they know their escape paths. And speaking of snags, let's have a look at that bad one in green timber that our first power saw crew went to check over with their bullbuck. Loose bark extends over 60 feet up the trunk. A big cluster of dead limbs is at the top. While the bull buck steadily watches the upper trunk for any motion, the fallers move with the greatest of care. The escape paths have been picked, of course. That pole may be used to pry off loose bark. Watch it! Everybody in the clear. Well, rain or shine, it's good to get into a clean, dry shirt at the end of the day. When every man in the crew has been checked in by the bullbuck, there's always one stop on the way home. And that's to see how she paid off yesterday.